In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn a raster image like this watercolor floral into a vector. We're going to go over how to scan it, how to clean it up in Photoshop, and how to vectorize it in Adobe Illustrator. One of the main reasons that you may want to vectorize your artwork is so that you can scale the image up or down without losing the quality. Raster images tend to get blurry when you scale them up, but vector images don't have this issue. So vectorizing your artwork will allow you to freely edit the artwork while still preserving the quality of it. So this method will work on most raster images, whether it's an actual watercolor painting that you scanned in or any artwork or fabric that you scanned in. And if you want to do this with an image from the internet, it's the same process, except that you won't have to scan it in. So let's get started. So if you're scanning an image in, just place the page with your artwork face down onto the scanner bed, close the lid and use the following settings. Resolution should be 300 DPI or higher. File type should be JPEG. Make sure that it's set to full color and hit scan or start to scan the artwork into your computer. Make sure that you know the location that your scanner is sending your scans to on your computer. Then we'll go to the computer and open the file in Photoshop like we would open any other file. And we're gonna start cleaning up the image, which means that we'll be neatly removing the background to make the background transparent and removing any other elements that we don't want in our final vector that we'll be making later. And I made a free download for you that will explain all of this a little further and also give you some extra information on top of what I'll be showing you in this video. So make sure that you click on the link in the description to grab that. So this image has a white background and I'm gonna follow a few steps to properly remove it. There are a few ways that you can go about removing your background and which method you use depends on the quality and the amount of contrast that the image has. I'm gonna start by using the magic wand tool which is located right here in your Photoshop toolbar. Up here on the control panel, you can see some available settings for the magic wand. The first box here allows you to make a single selection on your page. And the second setting here allows you to select more than one area at the same time. So I'm going to go with that second setting right now. And we're going to set our tolerance to 32 and make sure that anti-alias and contiguous are both checked. So what I'm aiming to do here is to select the white background areas and delete them so that I can get a transparent background. So let's click on the background part of the image, this white part. When I click on it, you can see how much of this area has been selected. Now making a proper selection involves some trial and error. So usually the first time you select, you're kind of just testing it out. The first issue that we need to check for is, did the magic wand miss catching any part of the white background? And the answer is yes. We can see that it did a pretty good job of catching all of this outside part, but it didn't get the background parts that are not connected to these outer areas because these white parts are enclosed by other shapes. So that's why we selected the second option for the magic wand tool, which allows you to select more than one area at a time. So just click on each additional area to select them all at once. So I'm clicking here, that's an obvious area, and then we can zoom in and check around to see if we missed any others, and we did. Here's another area and one here, then we'll scroll up and we're missing this area here, and this little one in between the pink leaves and checking around and it looks like that's it. So the next issue we need to check for is, did the magic wand grab any area that you don't want to delete? And I see that it did go into the floral design a bit here in a couple of places. It went into the flowers up here in this area and it also went into the flowers down here in this area. Since these parts had such a light color in them, they blended into the white background and so the magic wand selected them, but we don't want to delete those parts. So I'm gonna remember what these areas are, and I'm gonna have to clean these areas up separately first. So since this has to be done first, we're gonna deselect all of this for now, and we can do that by hitting Control D. So now let's tackle the two problem areas. I'm gonna go to the toolbar and select the polygonal lasso tool or keyboard shortcut L. That's this angular lasso right here, not to be confused with the other lassos. I'm gonna zoom into one of the problem areas on the page and I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool to select the part of the white background that's right next to the very light colored problem area. So I'll click here near where the problem area begins and then I'll drag the lasso over a little bit following the shape of the flower edge and click again and drag the lasso again following the shape of the flower edge and click again and keep repeating that, carefully following the shape that I'm trying to select until I get to a non-problem area. So a darker area that the magic wand wasn't picking up.
and then I'll just click around to the beginning of the selection to close my selection shape. So that selected the small part right here and I'm gonna delete that by hitting the delete key on my keyboard and then hit control D to deselect. Now, in order for us to be able to clearly see what we're deleting, let's make a temporary separate background layer in a dark color just to have some contrast so that we can see what we're doing. And we'll do that by going up to the top menu to layer, new fill layer, solid color, click OK, select the color that you want and click OK again and this will make a new fill layer in the background. So we can see that we deleted this part right here. And now we have to do the same thing with the other problem area. So I'll just do this area here the same way with the polygonal lasso tool. And then I'll move on to the next step. So once I've disconnected those problem areas from the main backgrounds, now I'm going to select the main backgrounds again with the magic wand. And this time, it's not grabbing onto any parts of the flowers, which is what we wanted. So next, let's do like we did before and select those additional white areas that are enclosed. So I'm selecting here, 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 and here. And now I've got my whole background selected. So I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard and you'll see that that got rid of the entire white background. But this doesn't mean that the cleanup job is done just yet. Now I have to zoom in and check to see if the magic wand missed anything else. In this case, it didn't, which is great, but it's not always going to be that easy. So I'm going to show you another scenario. Let's say that when you scanned your artwork, that the scan picked up on the texture of your paper. When this happens and you select your background with the magic wand, it might not make such a clean selection as it did in the previous scenario. So you select your background with the magic wand and delete. And when you zoom in, you find that it might have selected most of the background, but it'll sometimes leave little white spots sprinkled around like this. In this case, then I'll usually clean that up with the eraser tool. So select the eraser from the toolbar and go up here to the control panel. Here, you can increase or decrease the size of the eraser and increase or decrease the hardness of the eraser edges. You can also decide on the opacity of the eraser over here. So for the size, select any size at first and hover over your page you'll see a circle like this on the page that indicates how big the eraser is currently. If you want it bigger, then move the slider over to adjust it and hover over the page again until you find the approximate size that you want to use. So I'm selecting the size and I'm going to go up to 100% for the hardness of the eraser edges so it won't leave any fuzzy edges and I would bring the opacity up to 100% because I want to fully erase the background. I don't want anything left behind. So to erase these white speckles here, just hover over where you want to erase, click and hold down your mouse, and just slide your eraser over any areas that have the speckles. And you'll see as you go over those areas like this that they're being erased. So erasing this way goes pretty fast, but just make sure that you don't go too close to the edge of the flowers so that you don't accidentally delete any part of them. So now the last part of our cleanup is that we have to zoom in and check on the edges of the motif to make sure that those parts are totally clean. And here's where you're going to need to get pretty precise. So it's pretty common that you might have a white edge left around the motif like what you see here. Sometimes it's just in a few areas and sometimes it's all around the motif. Either way, we want to get rid of wherever it is. So the best way to do this is to use our polygonal lasso tool again and to carefully click around the problem areas and delete them. But when you do this, you're going to want to do this in small increments. 
So select a small area like this and delete that. Then move on to the next area and again, only make a small selection and delete it. And keep going around until you've cleaned up around all the edges that need cleaning. A couple of things to know are that when you do this, you have to be careful to follow the shape of your motif as accurately as you can. Clicking carefully around the curves to get the right shape and make sure that you don't make any harsh angles like this if they don't belong there. So cleaning around those edges might seem a little bit tedious, but it is necessary for proper background removal. And the more practice that you get doing this, the faster you'll be able to do it and it will get easier for you later on. Okay, so now my edges are done and I've deleted the entire background neatly. And that's my cleanup. So now we can hide this black background layer that we made. We don't need it anymore. And now we just have the cleaned up image on a transparent background, which is what we need. If you want to use this image in the way that it looks right here as a bouquet, then you can go ahead and save it either as a PNG file or a TIFF file. And it's ready to bring into Illustrator for vectorizing. But if you know you're going to want to use separate parts of this image, like each one of these flowers separately or some of these leaves separately to maybe create a repeat print or something like that, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to select those parts and separate them right now at this point in Photoshop. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now so that you know how to do it. But real quick, if you're finding this content useful and if you want to learn how to make prints like a pro, then please hit the like button and please subscribe. It'll help me to keep bringing you more useful videos like this. So we're going to copy this one flower out from this bouquet here. And I'll do that by using the polygonal lasso tool to neatly select around the flower shape. And you're going to want to be really careful and go kind of slow here because you want to make sure that you really follow around this shape properly and make the flower have a nice shape. So we'll slowly just click around in short increments until we select the whole flower. And then we're going to hit Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl J, which copies that flower onto a new layer. So now you can take your move tool and just touch the flower that you just copied and drag it over to move it away from the original motif. And the original motif remains the same. And if you want to have any other part of this bouquet as a separate element, then you can also just follow the same procedure with your polygonal lasso tool, trace around the shape, and when it's all selected, hit Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl J to paste it onto a new layer and then just arrange whatever elements you separated on your page separately the way that I'm doing right now. So now what I wanna do is I wanna save this file as a TIFF file with a transparent background. So in order to save it this way, I'm just gonna turn off the eye from the colored background that I placed here and make sure that there's no background color. So it'll save transparent. And I'm gonna click File, Save, and save it as a TIFF. So now I'll go to wherever I saved it and I'll right click and open the TIFF file in Adobe Illustrator. And now that I've opened this in Illustrator, we're going to start vectorizing the artwork. And I'm going to show you how to do that in part two of this video. See you there.